it's kind of neat to rope a cow with another cow, catch a cow with another cow, you know. Maybe, and you think about it, you're out there, you're out there branding calves, and maybe you're roping calves with that calf's great-grandma's hide, dragging him to the fire with her hide. That's, that's uh, one way to think about it, I guess. <laughs> the rawhider is an opportunist. The rawhider is the ultimate recycler. The rawhider is going to take this, an old non-functioning cow that dies, and if you can beat the coyotes and the buzzards to it, and we'll take that hide, and we'll take that, and we'll make something out of it that even the cow would be proud of. Rawhide is right off the cow, uncured, not chemically processed at all. With ranching, you know, we always have a need for horse gear, quality horse gear, and we can't buy the quality of stuff that we like to use. So consequently, we, we end up making a lot of our own. You either learn to make it or you find someone who does and you trade for it. We've cut our hide and it yielded about 200 foot of string, about a half inch or so wide. Now, we're gonna move to our gauge here and get a consistent width throughout. We're taking off the flesh side, trying to even it up. And get a consistent thickness on that string. This is a 16 strand hackamore. This makes a nice smooth hackamore body. And then we'll put a nose button and a heel knot to finish it. Rawhide braiding went from a utility to somewhat of an art form. You'll see a little bit of variation, but we look for consistency, straightness of the braid, and the uh, tension to be the same. We generally try to make them pretty soft since they'll transmit a lot of fuel down through our hands through the McCarty into the horse. Used to be a lot of big ranches operating in this part of the Great Basin and around Nevada and Idaho and Oregon here. And, and it would bring a lot of like-minded uh, people together, a lot of buckaroos, young guys together and stuff. And they would share ideas and uh, learn from each other. This is a three-strand twisted reel. So we're twisting three strings into one string. A little more dusty. There's a genealogy behind learning okay, all this stuff. Kind of and, and you're sitting around the bunkhouse in the evening and somebody's yeah. teaching you how to tie a particular button or something and you'll get to visit and you'll say, well, where'd you learn that? And he'll say, well, Roger Fisher taught me that button when we worked at the 25 together. Are you guys ready on your end, Dusty? You learn from this guy, from that guy, from that guy. And knowing who it came from, of course, is just like, having a quilt your grandma made, you know, means something to you. This is one of those subtle little things that, that changes, but you don't realize it until you look around one day and, and it's gone because uh, Whoa. no one's sharing ideas with each other because you don't congregate at the ranches anymore. We'll pull it through our juniper post and we'll stretch it and break it in and eventually it'll, it'll settle down. They'll either make you look good or they'll make you look bad, you know. Them things have got such a, so much life and they've just got kind of a mind of their own. The rawhide braiding and the horsemanship and everything is a byproduct of the industry. I mean, it's a lifestyle. And when the ranching industry changes as dramatically as it has, you know, in recent years, a lot of the culture and a lot of the folklore goes out the window with it. We live in an information age when people have absolutely no patience. And uh, sometimes you need to sit down like this and braid some rawhide and get your patience back. But I sure enjoy it. Doggone, it's a lot of fun.